Hey guys, uh, welcome back to um, what I think is our first video for 2016. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'd kick this year off just by, you know, laying out, um, I guess, our predictions um, for what 2016 will bring in the world of cameras, drones, lenses, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I've got Gerald here, um, he's in our sales team. And um, yeah, we're just going to discuss, you know, what's, um, or at least what we might see coming this year. So, Gerald, I'll kick it off here. Um, what is the one item that you are probably like most excited for that we might get this year? Oh yeah, uh, I think 2016 is going to be very fruitful. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming out, and I have to say, kind of what I'm watching at the top of my list is Canon. Yeah. The 5D Mark IV. Okay. okay, this you has think been a massive rumor and yeah. I think it's going to drop. Okay. Um, the 5D Mark III is getting a little long in the tooth now and yeah, a replacement of that's going to be phenomenal. Um, okay. They are implementing 4K video, which will probably be the standard. Mm -hmm. um, and just all around higher pixel, better focusing, it's going to be a very interesting camera. Okay, um, and then what about like, um, so there's all of these rumors going around, right? And a lot of people are saying that we might actually see two cameras. You know, sort of like two 5D Mark IVs coming out. Yeah, like a, I think they yeah. call it a 5DX. A 5DX, yeah. like a normal one. 5D Mark IV, 5DX. I, I don't see too much of a reason for them doing that. Um, one yeah. thing that I know they're going to do, which has been lacking in the Canon department, is up the frame rate. A lot of guys doing wildlife and sport that want the full frame but don't quite want to go for the 1DX or the 1DX Mark II, another okay. camera that might be coming oh, okay. out, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, is the slightly lower frame rate on your 5D full frame. So they can up the pixels, up the frame rate, get that focusing system tweaked. Might be an insane focusing system with more focus points than you can imagine. Okay. I think that'll be a beast for wildlife and sport. Okay, okay. Um, I, I'd like to throw a little prediction in there. Shoot. I think the 5D Mark IV, if there's like a video focused one, it might actually be mirrorless. Oh, you know, okay. um, I don't know exactly how they pull it off, you know. Um, Obviously, it'll need to be compatible with all of their current lenses, you know, the whole sort of sort of lineup as it is. So um, my thinking is that it might actually be the same size as a normal one um, so that they can maintain the same flange distance. Um, so all of your current lenses will be compatible. Yeah. I mean, I think like if they do something like that, like that might be, a, you know, that oh, might be a killer. Interesting thought. Um, one thing we're probably also going to see a lot more of are XQD cards and CFAST. Okay. Another thing that people need to start preparing themselves for is the speed boost. So anything in 4K and Canon's mm. wanting to get to 8K by 2017, okay. CFAST is going to slowly but surely become the norm. Okay. Well, another, another, another heads up to all the users out there that are stuck <laughs> with SD and CF. Yeah, well, I mean, Nikon just dropped the D5 and the new D500. Um, yep. and the D5 has got a model that only takes SQD, uh, XQD. Sorry. XQD, yeah. yeah. Again, those high frame rates, I mean, everything's just going to have to start becoming compatible. Your computers, your card readers, everything's going to become so important in this new and upcoming market of 4K and 8K. It's just getting quite yeah. insane. So, um, 1DX Mark II? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've got a few clients on my list for that already. Okay. I won't lie. Um, yes, a 1DX Mark II would be welcomed with open arms. Um, what they're going to do with it and how they're going to improve it from the 1DX, which is already such a just enormously good camera yeah, I mean, will be interesting. It's, it's already faster than pretty much anything oh, else man. out there. Yeah. Even the new D5 from Nikon is only as fast as the 1DX now. You know, so yeah, what, I mean, what, what they've been throwing out quite a lot is the new Canon processor, okay. Digi 7. Okay. And again, with the 1DX Mark II, it may be Digi 7 Plus. Okay. So the processing speed, you'll be able to shoot 15 frames per second raw files uncompressed. It'll just be a monstrosity. Okay, and again, probably, I mean, it has to be at least 4K video. Yeah, yeah, you know, 4K, kind of uh, probably 30 frames. I think they're kind of dubbing it, dubbing it down over there. Okay. Um, yeah, doing that in any higher frame rate, you might as well just buy yourself a red or yeah, the C500 enough. Mark II, but I suppose we'll talk about that in a moment as well. <laughs> <laughs> we probably have to. Um, in terms of other stuff though, um, so Fuji's come out Ooh, just now with the nice. X-Pro2. Yes. Okay, X-Pro2 just launched whole new processor, um, new sensor in that as well, new yeah. hybrid rangefinder yeah. type viewfinder. Um, what else do you think we might see from them in the coming year? Well, looking at the xt ones amazing viewfinder, one of the best um, electronic viewfinders available, um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with their rangefinder type camera. So a combination of optical and electronic in the X-Pro2. Okay. Um, again, Fuji's X-Pro series really 
the closest equivalent to Leica one can really buy at a yeah. much yeah. more affordable rate yeah. um, with just uncompelling quality. The ISO levels that you can get on a Fuji That's with good. crisp, crisp imaging, just amazing. And yeah, maybe seeing an X-T2 would be quite exciting, but yeah, the, I don't know. There's this rumor going that we might see an X-T2 by June already. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, and then Fuji's also throwing out there maybe 4K video in that. And I mean, that's the one thing that Fuji's never been able to nail. Um, there's never been yeah. a good video. Yeah. I mean, stills is fantastic, lens quality is amazing, but video has just been meh. Yeah, I think it'd be very interesting to see Fuji up the video game a bit. Mm. Um, they've got some phenomenal lenses with a lot of manual aperture control. So this is what your video Perfect. guys yeah. want yeah. and cannot find in some other DSLR brands mm. or mirrorless brands, for instance. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, go Fuji. Okay. Um, then uh, Sony, what are you expecting there? Still one of the most unbelievable mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. Big up to Sony for the full frame mirrorless system that's been working for the last however many years on production sets, size wise, compact wise, frame rate, bit rate. They're just, they're really dominating. Um, I don't know if they're gonna bring anything else out for 2016, because they've already got such amazing stuff in high demand. Yeah, so essentially, like, um, we've barely even gotten the A7S Mark II yet. And um, I think that's probably one of the main reasons why my mind slowly turns towards the idea that Canon might drop a 5D that's mirrorless to sort of compete in that segment that they've never even touched yet. You know, um, so, yeah, so hopefully we'll see something, you know. Yeah, I think it'd be a difficult feat for Canon to, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden jump in with the mirrorless full frame, especially with your EOS M3 just trying to find its feet still. Yeah. Um, the EOS M3, really great mirrorless, amazing autofocus, they really brought it up from the M1, okay. but there is also a rumor of the EOS M4. Okay. So, again, with your 5D mirrorless rumor or expectation, yeah. I think I might be <laughs> shut down by them, you know, <laughs> really concentrating on the M4. So, okay. What do you think the M4 might be? I, they won't make a full frame mirrorless you just yet. So. Yeah, okay. look, their lenses, sure, they, like you said earlier, they'd have to make their standard EF and EFS lenses or EF lens is only compatible with this yeah, camera. Yeah. So again, it would be a whole new mount for mirrorless and That's it's a very interesting direction they'd have to take. Okay, so you think if they do bring out like an EOS M4, it might be something that competes more in the line with like a Your Fuji. Sony, Sony A7000 or maybe even the oh, more okay. so like the slightly or entry level Fuji. XT10. Yeah, yeah, XT10 XT Fuji, units. yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay yeah. no, that makes sense. Um, so while we are on Canon, um, anything expected for lenses this year? Yeah, I've actually read up a little bit here and there, and okay. one of the thing that one lens that really caught my eye was the 200-600. Okay, okay. Um, there has been strong rumors of that for like the past year now. Yeah. Right. Well, the thing is this: uh, Nikon brought up the 200-500. Yeah. Nikon's 200-500 is one of the most amazing lenses. Oh, the, for, the, for the money, you yes, can't beat it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, variable aperture, aperture of 5.6, mm, mm. absolutely perfect with autofocus system on all the DSLRs. Yeah. And the sport. VR, just one of the most amazing stabilizers you okay. can use. Yeah. That coupled with the DA10, for instance, just out of this world stabilization. So from Canon, bringing out a 200, 600, okay. being brave with that extra 600 mil, but also I think it'll probably have a variable aperture, 3.5 yeah. to 6.5. So just to I keep the cost do down. hope we'll yeah. see it in the same price point as the, okay. the Nikon equivalent. Yeah. Okay. So that'll sort of put it just above like where the 100 to 400 is. Exactly. And That's just giving you that 600 mil range because everyone that's doing birding, sporting, wildlife. We're wanting more and more range with high quality on these types of lenses and bodies. So yeah. it's getting exciting. Okay, yeah. if, they, if they do bring out like a 200 to 600, yes. um, will that sort of impede quite a lot on their 100 to 400 sales? Well, the 100-400 Mark II is still a force on its own. It is. And replacing the 100-400 version one, which is out for eight years, mm -hmm. I think it'll still go strong for a good long time the 200-600 could again be in a much larger format where your 100-400 okay. fits comfortably in your hands out the window, getting those great shots. 200-600, mm. maybe quite a lot bigger. Maybe just a physically uh, just, bigger yeah, camera, Exactly, okay? yeah. Okay. Any other lenses? I know there's a 600DO that's supposed to be coming. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so apparently like a 600 more lens that's literally that size. You know, which um, will just absolutely <laughs> blow everything away. Um, the, four, right? Yeah, the yeah. weights on your DO lenses, uh, yeah, DO's right. diffracted optics will just be, it weighs nothing, which just really changes the whole game. Okay, yeah. okay. well that could do it. Um, then they've also, they've got a lot of lenses that's been around for quite some time now. Um, yes. Like the 50 mil 1.4. The 50 mil 1.4. I'm sure 1. people 4. are dying yeah. to see a replacement or upgrade of that. Just like a 50 mil 1.4 with maybe 
IS and STM? Oh, you know, possibly, yeah. STM has become a very substantial absolutely, part of Canon. Absolutely. Um, 1635 16? Mark III. Mark III. Now, here's an interesting okay. fact that I tell yeah. a lot of people. The current 1635 Mark II, mm. I don't believe, is better than the 1635 F4. I agree with you. The F4 handles color, noise, yes. sharpness. It's just an amazing lens. So, 1635 Mark III F2.8, giving your Canon users that 2.8 oh, aperture, which yeah. they want, and possibly seeing stabilizer and okay. much newer optics in there. Okay. Um, do you think Canon will follow Nikon on the 24 to 70? bring out a 24 to 70 IS? Well, I'll be honest, there have been quite a few mixed reviews about the Nikon 24 yes. to 70 VR. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy, not so happy, and at its price point, <laughs> more yeah. so the first. Yeah, it is um, a very look, expensive lens. I don't think that in such a pristine lens, VR or IS is such a substantial thing to have, yeah. but if Canon can make their image stabilizer work to their advantage in that lens, I think it would be phenomenal. Okay, yeah. okay. If, if they, Canon's image stabilizer in all the lenses assists with autofocus. It assists in so many points. So I think if they could use it to their advantage, it'd be nice to see. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, then let's jump from there. Let's talk about video cameras. Amazing. Okay. My favorite. Okay. Um, so Canon C500 Mark II, we have to see that this year. Shoulder mount, apparently. Shoulder mount, so yep. like a proper big boy. That's, uh, that's going to be a, a monster camera. Okay. okay. Um, 8K. 8K. Again, yeah. um, another rumor <laughs> is. <laughs> Canon's quest in bringing yeah. 8K in by 2017. And okay. the, they say the human eye can't really perceive much more than 8K. No. So where are we going from there? Holographics probably. No. <laughs> so who knows? So but you're yeah, thinking maybe... C500 Mark II. Announced end of the year and then released into 2017? Possibly. And okay. yeah, uh, you know, being in South Africa, we often wait a little bit longer than yeah. most for these type of things to arrive. but. Hopefully we see it this year still, because okay. the C500, I mean with the C300 Mark II coming out last year, the C500 is going to have to bring its best game. Okay, then um, do you think there's a chance that Nikon just announced that 360 video camera oh, yeah. thing? Yeah. Okay. Do you think they'll actually try and make a play into a proper video camera? Do you think they'll go there? No. No? <laughs> Um, because they've got the sensor tech, yeah. um, they use their Sony sensors and all of that, and they use it to great effect in their cameras. And all of those sensors are very capable of shooting video. Yeah. You know, so I'd like to see it, if there isn't any chance at all, you know, that Nikon might go there and actually yeah, produce would, a proper oh video yeah, camera. That would be great to see. Yeah. That would be really something else. I mean, the DSLR video format has already really come, come miles along. So. That would be nice to see them hitting that market hard. Like a little uh, Nikon variant on the C100 that's or something it, that's like that. That's it, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, uh, that could work. That uh, could just work. maybe be a little bit more appealing to your Cine type users, you know? Mm. Um, well, they've got a great range of lenses that'll work beautifully on exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but again, with the GoPro 5 coming along. Oh, GoPro, <laughs> okay, okay. Where okay. are we gonna put our money this year? Okay, true. So in 2015, we didn't see a new sort of out and out GoPro range being launched. That's it. We saw yeah. a GoPro were quite aggressive in their yeah. upgrades from the two to the three to the three plus to the four, yeah, yeah. and our whole range of GoPros like your Session, your Hero LCD, your Hero Plus. So there's a lot coming out, getting a bit confusing. I think it'd be nice for them to nip it in the bud and bring out a, a Hero Five. Okay, Hero yeah. Five. Do like a Hero Five Black and a Hero Five Silver, like they do right now with the four. That, yeah. To okay. keep it keep it simple, I think works okay. best. And uh, so. 4K at 60 frames? Full HD at 240 frames. Okay, yeah. And 8K at... 8K. Who knows how many frames. <laughs> <laughs> GoPro 5. GoPro it is 5 a rumor, it's something I just read up, but yeah, GoPro 5 for 8K. Sanders okay. and Lexar better up their memory cards once again. Um, unless they can make a, com a CFast card that small that will actually be compatible with your GoPro, but yes. That'll this is, this is the route we're exactly. going, people. By 2020, okay. we'll be 4K. Okay. 8K compatible all around. So another group of guys that we didn't see an upgrade at the beginning of the year or end of last year, the drones, okay? Um, at the end of last year, beginning of this year, DJI didn't drop anything new. Um, there was no Phantom 4, like a lot of people might have been expecting. What do you think we're going to see there? You think they will drop a new one? Well, I think they're just going to be upgrading a lot of the software, bringing out a new drone possibly this year. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see a, a Phantom 4 Pro. And I think DJI are probably working on it right now as we speak. 
okay. if I'm honest with you. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, their software and like you were mentioning a bit earlier, some of their software tweaks will be quite phenomenal. Okay. Well, the one thing that I'd like to see you know, in it is um, some of the technology that's from the DJI Matrice, like their, um, which was a test bed drone that they released last year. Um, and that unit had like forward facing um, sensors and that sort of thing that could scan objects and do avoidance um, and that kind of thing. And that's probably the main downfall of pretty much all of these drones at the moment. Um, they can follow you, you know, they can do absolutely amazing things keeping you in the shot. But the drone doesn't know when it's about to hit something, um, unless it's the ground. You and know, this doesn't make insurance companies very happy. No, not at all. You know, so if we can have a drone that yeah. actually you know, knows how to avoid trees and power lines and buildings and that sort of thing, like yeah. that would be absolutely well, fantastic. They've got the technology, Dion, so exactly. let's, hope it, exactly. let's hope they put it to use in some of the newer drones. Precisely. More entry-level um, drones. I mean, the Inspire 1 as well. Yeah, even if they come out with an Inspire 1 type of unit yeah, you know, got before they do the more commercial you know like the more sort of entry level stuff yeah. you know um, if they can bring out like an Inspire 2 um, they've got the new one that you can get now with a thermal Inspire camera Inspire Pro and yeah, yeah it's just and all of those um, those micro four thirds cameras on yeah. the what's it the X5 and the um, X5R you know so I mean sort of even some of that technology into a Phantom could be could be quite nice yeah nice, you know? nice to see a bit of a bridge going on there absolutely absolutely um, so yeah I mean uh, is there anything else that you think that oh, so here? something well worth mentioning from okay. Inspire or DJI is yeah. their Osmo oh, okay yes, yes Osmo has yeah. hit the market by storm uh, okay. all the units we've had are pretty much sold um, a fantastic stabilized gimbal camera mm -hmm. and yes I've had a lot of people tell me it's a hell of a lot better than the GoPro stabilizer okay, with okay. GoPro combination yeah, because yeah. you know these guys DJI just have that technology to yeah. incorporate such an amazing product and yeah maybe seeing an Osmo 2 I know it's maybe a bit too soon for that okay, but okay. an Osmo 2 with a slightly better low light chip better sound there are a few upgrades they could really do there yeah. would be really nice to, for them to actually least have in their pipelines yeah because that that would make a lot of sense because at the moment the Osmo camera is the same that's on the Inspire which uses um, essentially the same chip yeah. that's in the um, Phantom 3 and all of that, which is the GoPro chip, basically, right? A nice upgrade of that would be absolutely well yeah. worth it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Some low light performance would be absolutely beneficial. Yes. So, yeah. To be honest with you, what I saw in 2015 was, yeah. let's call it 90% of consumers that were coming in and buying yeah. cameras yeah. from us this year or last year. Um, low light performance, I would say, being on the top three of most important yeah. factors yeah. in buying a Definitely. camera. So. I think all camera brands should really, I mean, that's the way forward. Low light performance, high frame rates, good bit rate. So many key points that need to be improved on. So be nice to see that from DJI. Okay, fantastic, yeah. wonderful. So, yeah, so um, I think that pretty much wraps up, you know, what we wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, uh, if you guys enjoyed that video, you know, um, don't forget to uh, drop us a like um, or subscribe to our channel. And um, if there's anything that you guys think that um, we missed that might be coming out this year, leave it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you.